Literally, words, ansitu. Ansata means when somebody talks, you don't talk back. It doesn't just mean, you know, samata, to be silent. Ansata, to be silent in response to listening to somebody. Listen respectfully, stay quiet. Allah says when the Quran is being recited, you will listen to it carefully and you will remain silent. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So that you may be shown mercy. In other words, if you don't do it, fill in the blanks yourself. I don't have to fill those for you, you're intelligent people. You want to be shown mercy? You better show this Quran some respect. Allah remembers the favors He's done to you and me. Who doesn't remember? We don't. And Allah has been doing favors to you and me since before we can remember like Musa a.s. Since before we can remember, Allah has been doing things for us. And like He can recall them at any time like He did with Musa a.s. He remember, we forget, Allah doesn't. لا يضل ربي ولا ينسى My master, he doesn't get confused, he doesn't forget. He remembers. We're the ones that forget the, the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal. He doesn't. The dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah, part of that is remembering what Allah has done for you. What Allah has done for you. To try and remind yourself of that. And the parts you can't remember, Allah helps you out with that. I was taking care of you when you were in the belly of your mother. حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَحْنًا عَلَى وَحْنًا وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَمَيْنِ His mother carried him. A burden on top of another. And then she fed him for two years. Now you listen to that ayah. His mother carried him a burden upon another. And she fed him for a course of two years. At the end of that, who should you be grateful to? Logically speaking, you just heard about the favors of who? Your mother. So you would expect immediately the words would be, so be grateful to your mother. Listen to the words. He says, Anishkur li wali walidayk. Be grateful to me and then your parents. Because even when your mother was carrying you, she wasn't doing the actual taking care of you. She wasn't feeding you. Yes, her belly was it's on auto process, but that process was under my control. And when she was feeding you, the milk wasn't coming out because she commanded it to. I did. Thank me first and then your parents. That's what Allah teaches us. This Qur'an was right here, it was right in front of you, and you still wouldn't take it seriously. And the Messenger on Judgment Day وسلم, complains, this nation of mine took this Qur'an, not that Qur'an, this Qur'an. One of the other rhetorical benefits, balaghi benefits, of the word hadha in this ayah, is on Judgment Day, it will be like the Qur'an will be brought as a witness. You know how in court, you bring the witness? And then the witnesses or the evidence is brought and you point at the evidence and say, this is the evidence that that guy is a criminal. So the, ev the evidence itself will be the Qur'an on Judgment Day. Maybe the hearts are locked up. They're not allowing the advice to enter. So we need to figure out a way to unlock our hearts. Because I tell you, in your life and in my life, we know, when we hear advice that we know is true, that makes us want to change who we are and what we've been doing, you can't help but shed a tear. I don't care if that advice comes from your friend, your mother, your wife, your, you know, your boss, whoever. When, you're, when advice comes that hits your heart, you can't control your eyes. It just, it, it doesn't matter how big you are. It doesn't make a difference. The eyes start shedding a tear. When was the last time you and I heard the recitation of the Qur'an and the eyes couldn't help themselves? The first thing you gotta do is you have to discipline your life, people. I have to do it, you have to do it. You know what it means to discipline your life? Go to sleep early. Pray Isha and go to sleep. Don't go to the hookah joint until 12.30 a.m. Don't go see a movie. Don't go hang out with your friends. Don't watch Islamic lectures until 2 in the morning. Do not. It is not beneficial for you. Pray Isha and go to sleep and wake up early. Wake up before Fajr. Give yourself 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 I know it seems impossible. It's only impossible because of Netflix at night. Okay? That's the only reason it's impossible. Give the night life up. Let the night be for sleep. At least you're not accumulating sin every night. At least you're not burying your heart under more sin every night. At least you're sleeping. At least you're innocent for that much. At least that much. Then you wake up and you pray. At least start with a routine of praying Fajr on time. Start with Fajr. And the guys here, at least, at least once a week, guys, make it to the masjid for Fajr. At least one. I don't ask you every day. Just one day a week. Give yourselves one day a week. And you don't catch the second rakah right before the salam. Right? 
And then after you finish making it up, you're like, oh, masjid today. It's right. <laughs> you're like pointing at the right now. You wrote that down? You got that? You got that? Pleasure? You're like, yeah, that. <laughs> Get to the masjid early. Let me tell you something about fajr in the masjid. It has a spiritual impact that only people who go to it will experience. It can't be explained in a lecture. When you go to it, when you go to the prayer, and you sit there in the masjid quietly, and you wait for the prayer to start, and you sit there and you recite Qur'an, and you ask Allah to forgive you in those morning hours, and then you stand next to other believers and countless armies of angels, and you stand and you pray in front of Allah in that early morning giving up your sleep, which only happened because you gave up your nightlife, when you do that even once a week, the joy you will get out of it, you will, as you are walking out of the masjid, you will wish to yourself you did that every morning. I swear to it. I guarantee it. You're going to walk out of that masjid saying, man, I wish I could do this every morning. It is a good time. You really will. You know, let, let that be a good time. That's number one thing. The second thing is every single day, I don't ask you to recite a juz. I don't expect that much anymore. One page of Quran. In Arabic, I don't care how badly you recite. I don't care how bad leaders. If you're embarrassed of your recitation, go in a room by yourself. Lock it up. But recite it out loud. Not silently. Out loud. And before you recite, if you don't know any Arabic, turn to Allah and say, Ya Allah, I'm reciting your word only for you. And you're the only one who can make it easy for me. Now the last thing. If you can get this into your routine, then you add the next thing. Start memorizing the Quran. Even if it's one line, half a line, I don't care. Even if it's one ayah for a whole week, I don't care. 20 minutes, 25 minutes, whatever it is, full 100% concentrated time on just memorizing the Qur'an. This is your little secret, it's between you and Allah. The more Qur'an you are memorizing, you're telling Allah, Ya Allah, I took, I, I, my heart contains three more of your ayat. Ya Allah, my heart contains two more of your surahs. It's enhancing your love for Allah, and it's enhancing your love for the Qur'an. And the more Qur'an you memorize, then the more Qur'an you study, and the more Qur'an you use in your prayer, and it's becoming more and more and more of a companion in your life. But it starts small. It starts with 10, 20 minutes a day. Nothing more. If you can fix your morning routine, best time to memorize Qur'an in the morning. Absolutely best time. But don't overdo it in the beginning. If you overdo it, like, oh, I heard this lecture from tomorrow, I'm doing tahajjah tonight, then I'm gonna go to pray fajr, and I'm gonna memorize Qur'an for two hours, that will happen one time this year. Okay, that's why you don't overdo it. Just take it easy, little at a time, it will build. Allah Azza wa Jal, when He talks about reflection in the Quran, interestingly enough, He makes the same statement almost identically twice. He says, al Quran." Why don't they reflect, or don't they reflect deeply into the Quran? But one time, when He talked about this problem that people don't reflect, He actually made it a problem of the heart. So he said, Am ala qulubin aqfaluha. Or is it the case that their hearts have their own locks placed on them? The hearts are locked up. The hearts, you know, the hearts having a problem is described in different ways in the Quran. It is a spiritual problem. I think every one of you can understand that. When people don't do the dhikr of Allah, they don't remember Allah, they don't have the fear of Allah in their hearts, the love of Allah in their hearts, the remembrance of Allah in their hearts, then the hearts start getting locked up. When the hearts, when the people's eyes and their ears are listening to all the things that distract them from the remembrance of Allah, then the hearts start becoming hard and they start getting locked up. So Allah is saying, you are so distracted by so many other things that your heart is not interested anymore in spending time reflecting on the Qur'an and internalizing the Qur'an. This is a spiritual problem that Allah highlights in Surah Muhammad. In the very next ayah, Allah says, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ your hearts became hard. Allah first said that you did, you refused to think. I gave you ayat so you could think. But since you didn't think, your hearts became hard. Allah did not say your minds became hard. He said your hearts became hard. SubhanAllah. The previous problem was one of, why don't you think? And then immediately after, there's a spiritual problem that rises. Even in a Muslim community, is it possible our iman goes down? Is it possible that we don't feel as close to Allah in one generation after the next after the next, that we're becoming further and further away from Allah? Is it possible we're becoming more materialistic, more ghafil of Allah, that we don't cry in salat anymore, that we don't feel like we feel like reciting Quran much anymore, our du'as have become empty, we just recite some words and say them, we don't even know what they mean, and we don't even care? Does, is that possible? Is that problem possible? When the community, when a Muslim community has that problem, how can they fix it again?
again. How can they get back on track? These are the ayat. These are the ayat. Which means these ayat will be relevant for you and me. Not just as a nation, even as a person. Think, forget about the entire country. Forget about the entire ummah. Just think about yourself. Aren't there days where you have become so far from Allah that you need to get back and you don't even know how? Where do you begin? I feel so distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's been so long since I cried in a salah. It's been so long since I felt a connection with Him. How do I feel that connection? So many people ask that question. It is in these ayat that the answer lies. Step one, yatlu alayhim ayatihi. That he recites onto them what? His ayat. We have to engage the word of Allah. We have to recite the word of Allah. We have to stop and think about the word of Allah. We have to think about the fact that every time Allah is speaking, He's talking to me. He's talking to me directly. Wallahi, the greatest gift you will ever, ever have in your life is the gift of Allah's speech. Allah chose to speak to you. Allah chose to speak to me in this book. No other religion gives you this kind of direct access to Allah. That Allah is talking to you and me. But some people say, no, no, no. But Allah is only talking to the Prophet wasallam. He's not talking to me. This is not a book for me. This is a book for the ulama, for the scholars. This is just, I just recited with tajweed, but I'm not supposed to think about it. Fihi dhikrukum Allah says. In it, Allah is talking about you. That's literally what He says. In it is your mention. It's about you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.